Welcome to Second Chance Youth Ranch TV. You don't want to go away. You don't want to miss this show. We're at the lake and we're going to talk about fostering, mentoring, and adoption. So we'll be right back. Welcome to Second Chance Youth Ranch TV. I'm your host, Perry Black, and I'm with my friend, Wally Pollock. Wally, welcome uh, to the lake. Love it. Look how beautiful it is. Well, as I was saying just before we started taping, this is the blessing of God. Indeed it is. Uh, years ago, in 1980, my pastor said he couldn't afford to put me on staff at the church, so I went home and told my wife. She said, what, what should we do? I said, well, let's just go buy an acre and build a house, and I'd never built a house before. We slept on the floor the first year uh, on a mattress and literally built the house around us. And as a result, over the next several years, I became a building contractor. Look at you now. And God has blessed faith with blisters. Yes, sir. Always. And on Second Chance Ranch TV, really everything we talk about is about putting our faith into action. That's right. And uh, a lot of Christian philosophers so I'm gonna take my cool sunglasses Ooh, off. I'll do the same. Look a little bit like Arnold Schwarzenegger. I know muscles bulging out everywhere. Uh, but a lot of Christians have the philosophy of faith, but when it comes to actually putting their hand to it, that's where there's a disconnect. That's exactly right. Uh, I've jokingly said that many Christians just think that if they just put their hand to the offering plate, they prosper. But I believe it means getting the job done and that job is whatever God has given you to do. Wally, you actually, uh, about 16 years ago, adopted a young man who's a junior in Arkansas Christian Academy sure this did. fall. So tell me, how did you become an adoptive dad? It's a great question. Thank you. Absolutely. So 16 years ago, this little guy came into our life. Uh, mom, we'll just say mom made a decision that she really couldn't she couldn't properly do what she needed to do. And to how old was more. the little fella at this point? A couple weeks. Just a couple weeks old? A couple old. weeks old, yeah. So we basically, from the time of birth, he's, he's been in our arms. Yeah. So we've had him since... You uh, kind of started caring for him at first. Isn't, isn't that how it kind of right. evolved? You, you have a memory. Well, it works. It does indeed. So uh, we began to babysit and uh, initially. And uh, that turned into... We would go from time to time and, and uh, kind of get the little one out of a out of a situation it didn't need to be in. Yeah. And from there, it turned into it one laying on my chest, taking a nap. Yeah. And it was over and done. Yeah. And we realized what kind of life you know it would it would be. And her life was just in turmoil. It was it was yeah. it was bless her heart. But she I, I when we went through the process, told her I said you're making a great decision. He's in great hands. Yeah. Well, absolutely, he's, and he's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. But isn't, isn't that exactly how God works? He takes what otherwise in this young man's life now as a little infant, something that could have been tragic, Absolutely. traumatizing, even life-threatening, and now, 16 years later, still in a loving home. Yes. Do you have connections? Do you still have any contact with mom? Not at all. She in Arkansas no. at all? No, we don't. We don't have any connection. And at this particular point, I'm, I, I hope she's doing well. Yeah. And uh, we, we, we prayed that, that she does, that she gets on a good path and that she has a good life. But we have not had any contact. And yeah. uh, Colin, as you said, was 16 years ago, and um, he's, uh, he's doing well. He's doing absolutely fantastic. He's been at Arkansas Christian Academy for Five years? Since third grade. He's going to be a junior now, so what, eight years? Oh, my goodness. Eight years. Time flies when you're having fun. It does. So he plays football? He does. He does. He plays football. He started the golf program with... Yep. Uh, with uh, David Coach Brewer. Brewer. Yep. With Coach David Brewer. Brewer. Yep. Uh, helps out with the baseball team. He's going to play baseball as well next year. My and grandson, who's also in the same grade, yep. played baseball this year with Colin. Or did Colin play this year? Colin didn't play. He went out there yeah. and practiced with him. He Braxton, was, Braxton has really never been athletic. And we were shocked. He said, he did I well. didn't play baseball. He did well. Yeah, he actually, I think he got on base and scored. He did. He did for a fact. <laughs> for a kid that? That, that, that I even never threw him a baseball. Well, you know, so. and, and for Colin, he had some things growing up that we really didn't know if he was going to be able to play sports. Yeah. But I have to, you know, I go back in time, and the time that we came over to ACA in third grade, that was the beginning of a wonderful change from a, 
a spiritual standpoint, from an academic standpoint, and really bridging many, many things in his life, yeah. one of which was sports, sportsmanship, yeah. Christian sportsmanship, you know, with all the pastors who help out and the coaches who help out. It was just a, yeah. a, it was neat to see, but I really did not believe in his life that he would be into sports at all. Yeah. And he's, and he's doing well. You know, driving on I-430, driving south at the stagecoach exit in 2001, the same year that we broke ground and started building Second Chance Ranch, the Lord spoke to me just driving down the road and said, I want you to start a Christian school. Now, my girls graduated, both of my girls graduated Bryant. My oldest daughter just finished 25 years in Pleasant Grove, Texarkana, Texas, mm. Pleasant Grove School District. Uh, and I looked at Janet and I said, the Lord just told me to start a school. Now, fortunately, I had Doc Frederick on my staff at that time, a former pastor with many years of experience and had a PhD from ORU. She said, how are you gonna do that? And I said, well, Doc can help. And he helped me in 2001 start Arkansas Chris Academy. Back then it was called Family Church. We changed the name because a lot of people thought since it was called Family Church Academy, it was only for church, our church, church, church kids. Only. Yeah. And so we changed the name. Can you believe that Arkansas Christian Academy was even available? You'd think but, somebody would have already gotten that. You would think so. You would but, think so with that name. Uh, this fall, the fall of 2024, we are tentatively right now 325 students come fall, I think it'll be over 350. That's the awesome. LEARNS Act is in kind of limbo right now. I, I'm fully confident it's gonna be passed by the Supreme Court as, as legal and legitimate. And our foster children, children like yours, get to come to Arkansas Christian Academy. Pastor James behind the camera, he's got three kids, I think, in the school. James, is that right, three? <laughs> Talking to a guy off camera. <laughs> gonna be four someday, you got four kids, James, just three? You never know, though. <laughs> and, and I always want to tell the folks that James behind the camera got born again. He and I were talking about this last week. On our skate park, a long time ago before he was married, he was just a skater and skateboarding and BMX biking and all that. So God just uses us to reach people like you and your wife Absolutely. and Colin and my family Absolutely. and my grandkids. And what a blessing. It is. So we're going to take a break here in a moment. but. You're actually from the professional world yes. with, uh, I don't know if we should give out names or not, but they can send us a check for PepsiCo, Frito-Lay, right. et cetera. That's right, They're, and they are cash rich, so I would highly hope that after watching yeah. this that they, would, that they would help and donate. And you and I sum. have lots of familiar friends uh, that are now friends of all of ours from the old grocery business exactly days right. where you met them and that's where I work. That's right. And God has used all that to lead and guide us into family church, Second Chance Ranch, fostering, mentoring, adopting, television, outreach. What an amazing network. Isn't God good? Yeah, it? absolutely. And then absolutely. Arkansas Christian Academy, impacting hundreds of young people every day just like you. Why don't you check us out? And we'll take a break here in just a moment and we'll be right back with Wally Pollock. A mission field around you is filled with young hearts needing a forever family. And at Second Chance Youth Ranch, our team is committed to providing healthy, stable, loving homes and families to hurting children in the Arkansas foster care system and those up for adoption. Please contact us if you feel the tug at your heart to help foster or adopt and find out the steps you could take to help fulfill a child's lifelong dream. Maybe you can't foster or adopt, but you could help. The need for thousands of children in the system is staggering. But with the help of faithful partners and business alliances, we are meeting those needs right now. Would you help us make a difference? Every gift, regardless of size, impacts a child's life directly and helps provide for a home in the gap right now. Visit the Second Chance Youth Ranch website at 2CYR.org to read more, watch the stories, and to make a contribution for a hurting child's care. Monthly partners are needed, so please contact us right away. And as you partner with this ministry, you are partnering with the Heavenly Father that has promised to be Father to the fatherless. God bless you for helping Second Chance Youth Ranch. Welcome back to Second Chance Youth Ranch TV. 
Uh, I'm Perry Black, and Wally Pollock is our guest, a former professional with PepsiCo, Frito-Lay. And we're right here at the lake. You can hear the guy power washing in the back, the landscape people next door trimming hedges, and the swimming pool people next door. They'll be jackhammering in a minute. Making the beauty beautiful, right? Wally, you were there just <laughs> some time in a show that we did with Abby Fegley, who's uh, a ministry in where? Africa. Africa. That's right. In Kenya. Kenya. And the whole time that we're trying to shoot the that show, we got the foster home <laughs> in the back and the pond, and here comes one of my staff members on a riding lawnmower, and here comes the kids playing in the playground. We get all That's that right. quiet, and, and here, here comes, comes the guy next else. over the another lawnmower. We're all excited. That one stopped, and another one pops up. But, you know, I think that's what, I hope that's what some people like about this show, is this is not pretense, this is just real life. This is exciting to come down here and be in, be in this setting right here, but the, the word never changes. No. Right? It's still, it's, it's still yeah. about, you know, taking care of them kids. Well, when you say the word never changes, I think of the Frankenstein movie when the lightning bolt hit the, the rods and, and the doc says, He's alive! <laughs> The Word of God is alive. Yeah. It's sharp and powerful. Absolutely. Uh, it's just awesome. And the Word works if you work it. And that's the principle of faith. Uh, how did you go from in your career? Because we're actually in Hot Springs. And incidentally, this is where not, I started. Not that I'm going to give too much detail here, but I have rental property in Hot Springs, literally. 300 feet or less from a house in Hot Springs that you grew up in. That's right. When we were, when I was Y'all 15. Y'all moved from California. We did. When uh, 15 years old-ish, somewhere in that, in that time frame. Uh, moved to uh, Hot Springs. Lake Hamilton School. Lake Hamilton School District. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we're just hurt right up there. Up so were you a the, football star or anything? I was not. Did I'm, you go to school? I did. <laughs> I did. I even graduated. How about that? I did go to school and graduated and, and had a had a wonderful time out there at Lake Hamilton High. Yeah. It was a great school. And back then it was fairly rural. It was a very rural school. You go out there yeah. today and it has totally changed. It's a developed yeah. a, 20 plus years ago when I bought some property out near the school where you grew up, uh, it was just two little old lanes, you know, airport, else. highway 70. That's right. How about going over that bridge? Oh yeah. Did you ever clip a mirror? <laughs> and now it's five lanes. That's right. And it is one busy place. It is very busy. A lot but, of growth. Uh, Hot Springs is a beautiful place. We started coming down to Hot Springs as weekenders and uh, never owned a boat. Uh, growing up fishing, I'd spit on the worm and throw it out there, you know. Daddy wouldn't let us get in the boat because he said we talked too much. I don't know who he's, I think he's talking about my brother talking too much. Of course, it, w it wouldn't be you. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so tell me, how did, you, how did you migrate, after you graduated high school, at what point did you get involved with uh, Pepsi, so, Pepsi Co? Uh, actually, I, and I was in the restaurant business. I came very, very close to moving to Texas with a Western Sizzlin and being a part owner yeah. uh, early in my uh, early 20s. Um, thankfully, that did not uh, pan out. Ended up going over to uh, Frito Lay, and uh, worked my way through the system. And after 30 years, retired. Yeah. And uh, we're, we did did very well. I was, yeah. and it was a great company to work for. Just for our viewers' benefit, because how how did you come to know Family Church Bryant, me as your pastor? I mean, not pastor. Sorry, your pastor. My dear friend and happen? my pastor. How did that happen? Sure. Uh, so when uh, we were looking for a school, Colin was in second grade and didn't really like what was going on in the school at that time and what really looked at what was what was best for Colin, what was best for the kids. And so uh, we started searching out for a Christian school. Because you have Colin and then you also have some other sons. We do. So how, I many, have a, how many kids you got? I do. We have four in all. Yeah. I have a 34-year-old. Unfortunately, I went through a divorce, married, remarried, beautiful woman. Um, she had two, two boys. Yeah. So we have four boys and uh, they range from 34, uh, 18, 16, 16. So we have a lively... Yeah. Teenage house. One uh, one just graduated high school. He did. Yeah. He sure did. Yep. Harmony just, Grove. Harmony Grove. Yeah. Yep. So they've all went different places. Uh, all were at AC at one point. And uh, uh, depending on what they're, you know, the one was a real big football player. Yeah. And, and he wanted to play 11 man. And as you know, we have and eight we man. have eight, we man. Have eight man. So, okay. So we went ahead and went with that. But why we went to ACA, you and I met at the end of the, at the, at the back of the uh, sanctuary. Yep. And they went through the, the process of what is Arkansas Christian all about? And it was everything that was, and the way you laid it out that day was exactly what we wanted to hear. Yeah. All driven by the, by the Bible. By the Bible. And so what, and, and nothing's changed. It's maintained. 
it still has the same format, the structure, the teachers. The one thing that has changed is the growth. Yeah. The academics, uh, we've changed a little bit there. The sports have, have broadened. Yeah. Um, so it's it's nothing but growth. And well, it's, it's, a, it's a, a fully a accredited, fully accredited Christian school. Uh, people always ask, are you accredited? Yes, we are with the ANSA, which also accredited, accredits most all private Christian schools in Arkansas, if not the overwhelming majority of them. Uh, do you have sports? Yes, we do. Uh, and what kind of extracurricular? We do uh, technology. We have a broadcasting class, uh, IT. We do all kinds of stuff. We have football, basketball, volleyball, baseball, golf. Uh, not lacrosse yet. That's kind Soon. of pending. Uh, and, girl and softball. Girl softball right is on my agenda. Yeah. 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 But you know, I was reading the other day, and, and uh, a dad pulled four kids in, out of school in California. Yeah. The reason he pulled the children out of the school, he didn't have a say so. Not to say that our parents have an absolute, but they, that we listen. Need to be involved. Engaged. We have an advisory board yeah. that I'm very much involved with, the PTO. Yeah. The school, your administration allows parents to be involved, to listen, and just to, to make suggestions. Where this gentleman, he, they wouldn't even talk to. Him. Yeah. So he made the decision to pull his kids out with all this nonsense going out uh, with with woke and. Uh, and, it's bad. and with so many foster children coming and children in the community coming as we've continued to grow, we've expanded our what we call our skills program, which really addresses students with learning challenges. Sure. And we try to taper their education to meet their need. That's right. And we try to make sure that we don't overpromise and underperform, underperform, but we want to make sure our children that come and so many of our foster kids come who are challenged already from school district to school district. So we're gonna come back and talk a little bit more about fostering, mentoring, adopting, and how that's impacted your family, Absolutely. and how Arkansas Christian Academy, foster children at Second Chance Ranch, and those of you looking for a good home church can see your life change through the power of God and the grace of Jesus Christ. We'll be right back. My name is Chandler, and I'm 15. And my birthday is April 28th. I love the fish, I like to hunt, because hunting is relaxing, you're on the wild a lot, it's peaceful, fishing, it's fun because you can have fun on the boat or whatever. I love the outdoors. I like to go swimming, I like to um, just have fun with my family or someone, they go to car sheds or whatever. I'm in ninth grade and we're learning economics, uh, business, math, and all that, and I'm, I'm reading a biography also in school on uh, Blackbeard. Science, history, and um, music, lunch. <laughs> lunch is my big favorite. My favorite food is fast food, junk food, uh, seafood, and uh, steak and lobster. I'm gonna go to the fire service, volunteer fire service. And I want to get a uh, scholarship in agriculture or RN, mainly agriculture, because I want to be a farmer. I live on the, live out in the country and have my own ranch and animals. I just want to live off the land, basically. I'm always curious. I think out of the box. If you want me to do one thing, I won't do it the right way. I'll probably think out of the box and just be creative my own way. I've been uh, wanting to be adopted since I was eight. Um, I've been waiting since I was eight too, so. I mainly can't describe it, it's just hard, it's difficult. It's making me stress, kind of feel like no one's not out there for me anymore. That's how I've been feeling lately. If I have no family, what's the point of having a family? That's what I've been feeling like lately. Because I want to have a family, I want to spend time with, with someone for Christmas, for Thanksgiving, wake up in the morning, tell them I love them, and good morning. And just eat dinner with them, have fun, have a game day, go to church, go fishing, go to car shows or hunting. I wanted to be adopted because it just can help me. It could probably make my day, make me feel happy and not be stressed anymore or just depressed or whatever. I would wish for being adopted with a family that would be there for me, wake up in the morning, 
give me a hug, tell him I love him, and good morning, and being there, eating a good breakfast, probably on Saturday, having biscuits and gravy, hash browns, bacon, pancakes, waffles for my birthday or something. Hey, welcome back to Second Chance Youth Ranch TV. Coming back from those Project Zero videos are always touching, very moving, and we're able to show our audience a child, they get to see them, they get to hear their story. DCFS working with Project Zero and then Project Zero being such gracious partners with us and allowing us to assist them and them assist us with children that are looking for a forever family like your son, Colin. Yes, sir. Isn't that awesome? It is awesome. So tell our Good. viewers, tell me why, what has happened in your family as a result of having Colin in your family? How, how's that, we know it's impacted his life Absolutely. for 16 years. Sure. What's it like being a, an, a, a being a dad? It's, it's one, of the, one of the best things you can yeah. do. You're making an impact on a child's life. You're mentoring, you're directing, you're listening, you're going through the ups and the downs. But you know, uh, there's been many, for me personally, there's been, there's been many uh, wonderful things that from a, from a kiddo standpoint. One, my 34 year old, he was born, you yeah. know, and, and it was biologically mine, right? Yeah. But that doesn't really matter. No. When Colin came around and, and we saw this little guy and he's so beautiful and uh, realizing the situation that he potentially could be in. Now, once we began to know him and understand him and understand his biological mom, it wasn't that hard, it wasn't difficult at all, yeah. and it was quick. Uh, we met him early on, shortly after birth, and we brought him into our home for babysitting. Within three months, uh, he was, we knew, he we knew God's, yeah. God's direction and what the path was gonna be laid out. But you know, once we had that, that visitation, if you will, I guess you can call it that, um, I, I personally, I, and, and I don't know if I can say this or not, but we should be proud that people do give kids up to a foster to, to better for the betterment of themselves, yeah. right? To, to a better home that maybe they would be left in if not. Yeah. And I, and I, get, I can get a lump and of break my throat. the generational curse. Yes, absolutely. And there's so many of those and the pride, yeah. pride gets in the way of that generational curse of, you know, trying to, trying to make a difference. But I, 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 can, I can sit here and weep. I, I can shed tears when I think about Colin as a little guy uh, along with Ryan the same way, but they're both equal to me. Yeah. And that um, they're so beautiful. How, how can you not want a child, an additional child in your life? Yeah. From the time that they're, they're born to you go through all the different stages in life and what they bring to you, it's a blessing beyond yeah. you could never imagine. Yeah, and I know a lot of people are watching and wondering, I just don't know if I can do that. Yes, you can do that. Yeah, you can. Everybody can do that. There's room in the heart. There is. For one more. Absolutely. All you have to have uh, is a room. So we, we at Second Chance Youth Ranch, as a placement agency, our staff will contact you if you're interested. They will literally walk you through the entire process. We have it streamlined so it's as painless as possible, give you training, give you support, uh, place a child in your home, and then, but we don't just leave you out there. That's right. You probably didn't get a whole lot of support because it was more of an individual it placement. Was. It was. But but our case managers and our therapist and our ranch team, like Billy and Rachel, they are on they are on point, helping as people are learning how to foster, learning how to mentor, yeah. learning how to adopt, that's and right. how to raise a child that's not necessarily a birth child and how to see that integrated, that child integrated into the whole family. And I've watched from the yep. side too, the, the team, you know, I've gone through the whole process myself, yes, in a little bit different path, but as you said, you know, everyone can. Yeah. With the, with the support that, that, the, that you give, the support that Billy and Rachel give, the counselors, all that you've mentioned, you can do it, everyone can do it. If you have a desire, a small desire, take that step, you know, and make it, make it happen because what do we have, 4,200 or so? About 4,200 kids, kids in foster care. Kids in foster care right now. Some wanting a forever family, some wanting to be reunited to their family, and some just needing a foster family for a few months or a year or so. And folks that are watching can make a difference. I have to tell you this. So I'm a little bit on the older side, 
of, of a dad of, uh, you know, to be, I have a 16, so he's 16, and uh, I'll just say I'm 60, but had I not made that change, and I look back in my life, I want to tell you something, you know, for people to, to pray, uh, you know, out, out loud in a social setting, it's a difficult thing to do. Yeah. But so for Colin, he went to Arkansas Christian Academy, obviously learned a lot about Christianity, yeah. Bible, you know, how to pray, um, how to worship, um, how to be just a good model Christian, right? Yeah. Well, he brings that home. So we want, we're, we're trying to create a good home life as well. Yeah. But he does, and so then it's now dad, he looks at dad, dad, and I've never been one to openly, you know, say a blessing, say a prayer. Yeah. And so when I say that, from that point to I'm active in things that I never thought I'd be active, yeah. but he's a teenager. So we're fishing all the time, we're playing football, we're throwing playing the ball around. Golf. Golf. Yeah. You know, so, um, and I'm skipping a lot there, but my whole point is when you get involved, yes, the child is blessed, but the blessings that are put on you is incredible. Oh, enormous, isn't it? Yes, it is. You know, when everybody does something, uh, it makes the light work. And if you're not in a 50 or 60 mile radius of, of Bryant or Little Rock, <clears throat> and you still have interest in finding out more, contact the call. There are call, the call offices all over the state of Arkansas, and they can help you. Yes, sir. Uh, and they'll walk you through this process as well. So there's no reason for you not to be involved. There's so many things going on at Second Chance Youth Ranch with the uh, LEARNS Act that's in limbo right now. Uh, more and more foster children want to come to Arkansas Christian Academy. And so we're looking at how can we continue to expand. So literally today, while we're in Hot Springs, we have a bulldozer and a mini track hole over at our campus in Bryant at 21815 I-30, and they're knocking down trees because we're building a brand new 15,000 square foot, what's probably gonna be a middle school, right there on our 25 acre campus. That's God right. is just yeah. expanding, and here's what I want you to know. When you put children, yours and hurting children, on top priority of your life's list of priorities, God gets involved in your life. So I wanna encourage you to be involved, to be engaged, and if you don't know what else to do, contact us right here at 2CYR.TV, our Second Chance Youth Ranch, 2CYR.org, and let us know of your interest. Your civic group, your church group, your business group, or you as an individual can be a part of what we're doing That's right. on our Little Rock, uh, not our Little Rock, but our Central Arkansas campuses. We have homes in town, and then we have our 300 acre Second Chance Youth Ranch campus out near the little community of Perrin. So I wanna challenge you to get involved and get engaged and don't get left behind. We're gonna take a moment and tell everybody goodbye. <laughs> we'll be back and take, do this again. Take that step and go out and do what's on your heart.